Hello, and welcome back to our channel, UTK Entomology. I'm Claire Phillips from Anderson County High School, and this is Dr. Ernest Bernard from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, Professor of Nematology and Entomology. Good morning. Good morning, Claire. Since we dissected the millipede last week, there are just, there are hundreds of them pouring out of here. What is the next step in identifying the nematodes? Well, the next step is to use a key that, that uses characters of the nematode to identify the genus or species. Uh, this is an important step to, to get further in our research so we know, know exactly what we have. So could you show us an example of a nematode using that key? Yes, uh, we're going to do at least two of them here. Um, so on the screen here is a key. This is a key to the, com to the genera that we have in millipedes around here, mm -hmm. the nematode genera. And uh, the way a key works, and most biologists have, are familiar with these and use these to identify uh, insects or amphibians or fish or anything mm -hmm. like that. It, it, it's, a, it's basically a decision tree where you have two choices. So up here we have uh, number one and one prime. These are two choices. Uh, the first nematode we're going to look at, we're going to see if the head has a if the head annule, the, the end of the head, is mm -hmm. cap-like and should be several times longer than the next annule. We'll also look to, at the basal bulb and these little horns that their sensory organs, the amphids, are sitting on. Um, if they have those characters, it will be in the genus Coronastoma. Mm -hmm. if, it, if they don't, then we'll go on to number two here. So let's take a look at a nematode that we already have on the screen. Uh, this use, so we have a computer operated uh, microscope system here. Uh, we control everything with, with, uh, with, a, uh, with toggles and very, actually very little work with a hand. Oh. So let's go to, um, so here's a, here's a nematode. So we're going to look at this nematode and actually what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to move this down just a bit. Don't know if this is going to work. But let's take a look at the characters and I'll slide it back up again. Okay. So first annual, uh, first head annual cap like several times longer than the next annual. Basal bulb with, so let's take a look at that. So here we have a, a big, a strong esophagus. This is the esophagus. It's divided in basically two parts, a procorpus and a basal bulb. Uh, the the head cap is actually there's actually just one annual. You can see the indentation right there, right there, and we see that this runs all the way around the head, all the way around. So this is a this is a huge annual. There's a there's the line of the annual. The annuals are the rings around the nematode's body. So all of this is the first head annual. And if we focus a little bit more on, we can see a little horn sticking up. This is a very, very rare on nematodes. There's two of these. Here's one. And the other is right there. It's on the other side of the body, so it's harder to make out. So that's the nematode we're looking at. When we look at the alternatives now in the key, the first annual is cap-like, much longer than the next annual, the basal bulb is without a grinding valve, and the amphid apertures, those are the sense organs, are on small horns protruding from the interior end. So we know this is a member of the genus Coronastoma. Okay, so this is the genus Coronastoma. It's nice when it comes out at the very first culprit because then we don't have to do any more. Fortunately, this nematode is very distinctive and easy to recognize from those characteristics. Now we're going to go to with a nematode that goes all the way to the end of the key so we can see all the characteristics that we use for these nematodes here in East, Eastern Tennessee. Well, Claire, we just uh, identified a nematode very, very easily. In fact, it was this one right here, Coronastoma. And so that one was, that one was easy. But now we're going to do a, do a nematode that's pretty much at the end of the key. So before we do that, let's, do, let's look at a little bit of the internal anatomy of, the, of this nematode because we're going to be using these terms. And, and once you see these terms, I think they'll, they'll be pretty obvious. And as we go through the key, I'll be pointing them out on the nematode we're going to be keying out. 
So we have a, we have a plate here of uh, the common nematodes we find in millipedes in East Tennessee. And um, let's look at some of the terms. So nematodes have a head end and they have an esophagus. And the esoph here's the esophagus right here. On this particular nematode, there's a very long, on this one too, let's look at this one because it's also labeled. We have a, the esophagus has a very long procorpus. It's this long slender structure from the mouth end down to the basal bulb. The basal bulb usually has a grinding apparatus in it, a, a grinding valve that breaks up the bacteria and other food that the nematode is eating. Then the food continues on into the intestine for absorption. So we have a procorpus and a basal bulb. Some nematodes have a, have a prominent procorpus and then a slender part and then the basal bulb again. So the slender part is called the isthmus. If we look down at nematodes down here, we'll see some different modifications. So here's a nematode without an isthmus. It has a procorpus and then it has a, a grinding a basal bulb with a grinding valve in it. No isthmus. But these two nematodes do have them. So they have a muscular procorpus and then an isthmus, which can be short or long, as short and long, followed by the basal bulb and then the intestine. So th these are some of the major features we use to identify these genera. By the way, these nematodes are big enough under the dissecting microscope that you can often identify them without putting them under a compound microscope. All right, now we're on to the key. Let's identify another nematode. So here we have one that's uh, fairly common in some of our millipedes, and it has an uh, interesting esophagus, at least to nematologists. Here's the head end. It has a large procorpus, very muscular. You can see the muscle fibers in there. A long isthmus, the connecting part between the procorpus and the basal bulb. In here, there is a valve that grinds up bacteria and food uh, and then passes into the intestine, which is down here. So let's go, we're going to flip back and forth between this picture and the key uh, to identify this thing. So let's go to the key. So couplet one refers to the first annual being cap-like, basal bulb without grinding valve. The alternative to that is the first annual is variable but not cap-like with usually simul similar to the next annual and the basal bulb with a grinding valve. Going back to the picture, we find that in the coronastoma, which is the previous one, there's a big first annual here, but we can see there's a bunch of small annuals. So the first annual, which is actually this one right here, really isn't any bigger than the other ones. And also there's a grinding valve. So we know it's not coronastoma, and we move on to number two in this key. So esophagus with two parts, which are a th procorpus and a basal bulb, or esophagus with three parts, procorpus, isthmus, and basal bulb. This clearly has three parts, a procorpus, an isthmus, and a basal bulb. If it didn't have a, an isthmus, this would just be a, a long, slender tube. But instead, we have this procorpus here that's really well developed. So we have these three parts. So let's go back and see where we are in the key then. So if it's three parts, we're going to go to number six. Isthmus shorter than basal bulb or isthmus longer than basal bulb? The isthmus is clearly longer than the basal bulb. And if you, if you, if you know, if you have this character and you're not sure if it's, you know, it's kind of close, you can actually just put a ruler up on your screen and measure it. Compare it to the basal bulb. So this isthmus is longer than the basal bulb. And back to the key, that makes it the genus Aeroides. So we now identified another genus. For some additional light microscope and scanning electron microscope images, such as these here, make sure to check out the description box below. And finally, make sure to hit the red shiny subscribe button. Thank you for showing us today, Dr. Bernard. Thank you, Claire. I enjoyed it.